Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here on May 9th of 2020. This is our Sabbath day, and according to the calendar, tomorrow is Mother's Day. Now, I was looking in the Third Testament of the Bible, studying it in chapter 20, thinking of doing a rehash of the class we did last year related to Mother's Day, where we introduced you to our universal mother, who is Mary, the mother of Christ. She is our universal mother. You see right there in part 7 of chapter 20, it says the universal emanation of Mary. And so as I was thinking of redoing that class, and I started to pray about that class, I was led in a whole different direction. Even to my surprise, we're not going to talk much about Mary at all. So if you want to see that class, look for a link to it at the end of this video. But in this class, we're going to talk about the origins of Mother's Day. And for that, we're going to jump over to history.com and look at the historical origins of Mother's Day. In other words, why do we celebrate Mother's Day in the first place? We know it's not in the scripture at all, but where does it come from? So let's step down through this website from history.com and see what it says. Okay, in the first section of this website, we see that Mother's Day became an official U.S. holiday in 1914 by a lady named Anna Jarvis, who went on to try to remove it from the calendar altogether. But let's see where it came from before then. We see down here it says the history of Mother's Day. According to History.com and any other website you look at on the subject, including your encyclopedias, Mother's Day can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and Romans who held festivals in honor of their mother goddesses. And when you Google the names of these mother goddesses, you find out that they are, in fact, the same Roman mythological god the universal mother of not only the gods but also of all humans, animals, and plant life referred to as the Great Mother. She was the personification of Mother Earth. So this mythological god has been set up to replace our true universal mother who we recognize as Mary. Take a look down in the description of this video to find a link to the Third Testament of the Bible, both a PDF version and an audio book. Read or maybe take a listen to chapter 20 of the Third Testament of the Bible so we can get an idea of who Mary truly was. They didn't have to go in and create a mythological God around the Universal Mother. Turns out we already had one. So this is where mothers they come from, not the celebration of our mothers who we love dearly, but the celebration of these Greek gods. So Mother's Day is just another day of celebrating the pagan gods, like Easter, Halloween, and Christmas. When we buy gifts and flowers and send our mothers cards on that day, we're not celebrating our mothers, we're celebrating the pagan gods. We, see, we read here that it was introduced into the church as a major tradition in the United Kingdom and parts of Europe, as it was seen as a time when a faithful will return to the mother church for church service. So this is why they go to church on Mother's Day. And just like all of the pagan holidays where the focus faded off of the pagan gods and was steered more to commercialism, the traditions now have shifted to flowers and tokens of appreciation, i.e. commercialism. So just like the other pagan celebrations like Christmas and Easter, we're not venerating those gods associated with them. 
we may not pay attention to the fact that Santa Claus is a god, a form of sun god worship, and that Halloween has another god associated with it, as well as Easter. But like those holidays, we are still performing the acts associated with worshiping those gods. That's like being sure to take a day off work every week to rest, but not giving the Bible credit for telling you to do so. You are performing the act necessary for the worship of our Father, even though you don't know that by taking that rest day, you are doing just that. So to the chagrin of our mothers, we as Israelites should be rejecting these pagan holidays. And if your mother is anything like my mother, she has had and does have and will always have a hard time understanding why you do not celebrate Mother's Day. Acting like your love for her is somewhat questionable because you don't making you feel shameful for being obedient to the word which tells you in the very first commandment not to worship any other gods before the most high our father in heaven who created us well let's remember what the messiah says about that in Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 says he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me so if we are willing to celebrate pagan gods in order to please our mothers, we may find ourselves unworthy of the kingdom of heaven. So let's find some other way to honor our mothers and celebrate our mothers, being sure that when the calendar says Mother's Day, we do neither. Call your mother every day, but don't call her on Mother's Day. And I'm going to close out by mentioning how at the beginning of these tribulous times we are realizing that the separation between our earthly family and our spiritual family is growing a lot of that has to do that we don't call them on pagan holidays or birthdays but let's remember that we have another family a spiritual family as talked about there in Matthew chapter 12 and 50 it says, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. May our Father bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.